This is my comfort zone. Yes, the bed is of course my comfort zone as well, but what I actually mean is this. The lens. A 35mm focal length. A focal length I've been using almost exclusively for the majority of my photography for the last five years. Well, and today it's time to leave the comfort zone. But of course we won't leave behind a mess, but let's leave it as clean and pristine as the tool I'm using to leave my comfort zone today. This 28mm lens. And since I'm leaving my comfort zone with this focal length, I thought that I might just as well go a step further and try to leave my comfort zone in more than just one way. <laughs> Starting with the weather. Don't we all prefer to go out in good weather and maybe stick to watching YouTube videos inside once it's rainy and stormy? Well, I picked out a day for my photography trip this time that had a lot of rain in the forecast. A day I would usually more than once stay home. It already rained when I left the house, so I decided to pack an umbrella, a rainproof jacket and some garbage bags I could wrap my camera in to not let the rain stop me from actually shooting. Even though rain here in Germany is usually a very reliable friend that shows up more often and <laughs> stays for longer than expected, even in situations where it wasn't even predicted, this time it just did not happen. As I arrived in Düsseldorf, my shooting location for the day, it already started to clear up a little bit and after a while when I started to shoot, Actually, the sun came out and stayed for the rest of the day, even though it was predicted to rain non-stop for at least the next five hours. So it seems like the odds were simply not in my favor that one day where I was actually hoping for rain to really make this experience extra uncomfortable. It was extremely windy though and still a bit uncomfy that way, which I would rate as an A for effort. Something I also do too seldomly, since it's out of my comfort zone, is to go to a different city on my own. I was meeting a friend for a coffee in the morning, but other than that I had no other plans than to shoot and roam around the city on my own. No people to hang out with, just me. Being on my own, especially in an unfamiliar place, does not feel too at ease for me. But usually, after half an hour or so, the feeling is gone since I remember how relaxing and free it can be to be with yourself and not have to care about anybody else. You can walk the streets you want, pause whenever you want and when you want, go to the stores you want, take as many images you want without the feeling of letting somebody else wait for you or even hold you back in your photography. So even though spending a day alone can feel intimidating at first, every time I do it, I remember how refreshing it actually can be. And I remember that I should do it more often, since this is a very good way to 100% focus on my photography. The thing that usually holds me back the most when spending the day on my own is going out for food alone. I don't know why, but sitting in a restaurant alone while all the people around you are there with a group of friends feels kind of uncomfortable and lonely to me, so much so that I avoid doing it as much as I can. In fact, I think I can still count on one hand how many times I've been eating out only on my own without any other people. This time, however, I knew I wanted to do it. Not only because I wanted to leave my comfort zone, but also because I didn't want to miss the opportunity to eat in one of my favorite restaurants ever, Takumi Ramen in Düsseldorf. So this time I decided to not let fear get in the way and I decided to go out on my own and order myself an extra big portion. And what can I say? People did not stare, people didn't seem to judge me. To be honest, I think people didn't even notice me and I think people didn't even care. The person that judged me the most for going out eating on my own was me. No stranger, no waitress, no other restaurant guest, but just me. We are all so in our heads all the time and so busy with our own lives that truly people don't care as much about what we do as we think. But now let's talk about the big step out of the comfort zone when it comes to focal lengths. 
I have shot 28mm lenses here and there in the past before when trying out my friend's lenses, but usually only for a handful of shots and almost never for a full roll. So shooting 28 instead of 35mm felt like a huge change for me. One might think that the difference between 35 and 28 is not too big, but in my opinion there are worlds between the two. 35mm feels like a good all-around focal length, you can get wide shots but still isolate your subjects. And with 28mm it just feels, well, wide. With the 35mm lens I know my distances, I know how far or close I have to go to get my subject in the frame the way I want and I've accommodated my vision so much to the 35mm focal length that I basically see in 35mm and everything in my brain seems to be calibrated for it. But with 28mm all that was of course gone. Pretty much in every shot I am not close enough or did not frame my image as neatly as I would with my comfort zone focal length. In fact the 28mm lens was also uncomfortable to me when it comes to operating with it since I can barely see the frame lines in the viewfinder with my glasses on on my M6. But let's talk about the lens itself. The lens I am using here is the TT Artisan 28mm f5.6 lens that TT Artisan has kindly sent me to try out. A short disclaimer, I am allowed to keep the lens in exchange for including it in the video, but everything you will hear me say is my honest and unbiased opinion and in fact there are some good but also some bad things I have to say about this lens. But first things first, it's a tiny and compact yet rather weighty lens made out of brass for the Leica M system. I've been playing with the thought of trying out a 28mm lens before, but couldn't really justify the price for a Leica lens for a focal length I didn't even know if I liked. Therefore the TT Artisan lens came at the right time and might be a great option for people who might be in the same situation as I was, since the price point is pretty affordable for right under 400 euros on the European and a bit over 300 dollars on the American market. What astounded me the most about this lens was probably the impressive high quality packaging which I didn't expect from a lens with this price tag, even coming with a metal lens hood. The lens also feels really high quality with a clicky aperture and a smooth focusing ring. The style of focusing tab is not my favorite though since I find it to be hard to build muscle memory with but I got used to it over time. Since the lens is made out of brass, it will age really really beautifully and create this really beautiful patina over time, which probably is what excites me the most about the lens since I never had a brass camera or lens before and which also motivates me to take it out more often. The maximum aperture of f5.6 might feel a bit limiting and for some people it maybe even is. But honestly for the things that I like to do like street photography or the occasional architecture shot it's more than usable for that. The lens is pretty sharp overall, not only in the center but also in the corners even when being shot quote unquote wide open at f5.6. The one thing that could be annoying in some situations is that the lens is flaring pretty badly in direct sunlight making the images a bit muddy and soft at times. One thing that also meant to leave my comfort zone with this lens was the need of calibrating it beforehand. I've never been too close to a lens with a screwdriver in my hands before, so this time needing to read a Chinese manual while loosening or tightening some of the screws to get the focus to where it was supposed to be was, well, nerve-wracking to say the least. To be honest, this is pretty much my one and only major critical point about the lens because I don't think the consumer should be responsible for the quality control of checking if an item is actually doing what it is supposed to be doing. I understand that there isn't too much to expect from a lens with this price point, but to be fair, I would rather pay 50 euros more and get a lens that works perfectly straight out of the box than pay less and then have to fiddle around with it on my own and still feel weird about it because you're still unsure if it works out correctly or not. I even had to wait until my friend Elmer came around with his M10, which by the way was still before I got my own M10, to help me calibrate the lens properly since it felt almost impossible without a digital camera to double check everything straight away. And one more thing out of my comfort zone is talking to strangers. As you know, the majority of my street photography consists of candid shots, images where the subject might not be aware of me to capture pure and natural moments. However, this time I decided to talk to more people than I usually would and ask if I could take a portrait of them. 
Entschuldigung, ich will Sie gar nicht stören, aber ich habe nur gerade von Weitem gesehen, wie cool das aussieht in Ihrer Mütze, dass Sie hier sitzen. Ich wollte fragen, ob ich wohl ein Foto von Ihnen machen dürfte in Ihrer Pause. Ja, Sie können auch. Ja? Sie müssen nicht Ja sagen, ich wollte nur fragen. Okay, dann beachten Sie mich einfach gar nicht, bleiben Sie einfach in der Konversation und dann mache ich nur kurz ein Foto, ja? Sie sehen richtig cool aus, Alpha. The fear of rejection is somehow always present, even though Super. it's not really rational. Firstly, people have the right to say no, and it doesn't even necessarily have to do something with me as a person. And secondly, in my experience, most people are actually quite happy and like compliments and therefore also accept to be photographed if you approach them in a kind and nice way. Hi, Entschuldigung, ich will euch gar nicht stören, aber äh, ich fotografiere Sachen, die ich interessant finde und ich habe so selten jemanden auf der Straße einfach Shisha rauchen sehen. Ich wollte fragen, ob ich ein Foto von euch machen darf. Ja. Ja? <lacht> Richtig cool, also sehr entspannt, kann man eigentlich echt mal machen, ne? <lacht> ähm, äh, ihr braucht mich einfach nicht beachten, macht einfach, redet miteinander und dann... Ja? Okay. Bitte? Du willst von mir ein Foto machen? Ja. Mit der Shisha oder was? Ja. Aber ich weiß nicht, ob, das mit der, ob du mit der Kamera klarkommst. Das ist analog, das ist Film. Das ist ein bisschen kompliziert. Ja. Aber ich kann dir die einstellen und dann musst du nur auf den Knopf drücken, ja? Ja. ja? Aber wenn du willst, kannst du auch. Ja, warte mal. Ja. So musst du einfach nur noch drücken. Ja. Da durchgucken und dann nur drücken. Ja. <lacht> Danke. <lacht> Sehr gut. Noch einmal? Äh, ja, da musst du, da ist so ein Hebel. Guck mal, da ist so ein Hebel, den musst du so spannen. Warte mal. Das ist ein bisschen kompliziert, weil das eine Filmkamera ist. So. Ja, ist nur 36 Bilder, hab ich. So. 36, aber ist nicht schlimm. Kannst du unser Bild schicken? Das bin ich. Ja. Kannst du mir einfach eine Nachricht schicken? Kannst du sagen, ich bin der mit der Shisha und dann erinnere ich mich und dann schicke ich euch das, ja? Richtig coole Sache auf jeden Fall. Viel Spaß, ne? Ciao. Entschuldigung, das sieht so toll aus mit den beiden Hunden. Dürfte ich wohl ein Foto von Ihnen machen? Ja? Hallo, na wie heißt ihr denn? Puppi. 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 Oh. Puppi. Das ist Puppi. Das ist Puppi. <lacht> ihr seid aber süß. Hallo? Ja, das ist super. Vielen Dank, danke schön. Schönen Tag Ihnen noch. Ihnen auch. Tschüss. But what is my verdict now? I think leaving the comfort zone is always worth it. Leaving the comfort zone doesn't mean that you have to be good at it straight away, nail it straight away, or even feel comfortable with it straight away. But the pure fact of doing something new and trying something different is enough of an accomplishment. To be completely honest with you, I think most of my images with the 28mm lens were garbage. I'm not even kidding you, but I think in most shots I wasn't close enough and I wasn't able to pull focus quickly enough on many of them due to the lack of muscle memory. But still, I think this was an incredibly valuable day of going out and shooting. Doing these little steps of getting familiar with a focal length I had little to no experience with before, spending the day with me in my own pace, taking myself out for lunch on my own, talking to more strangers than usually and simply enjoying free time with just my camera was overall a really fulfilling day. And since I have the TT Artisan 28mm lens now, I am sure that I will use it more often and maybe even step out of my comfort zone more regularly. And at this point I don't even see a reason to upgrade to a more expensive 28mm lens in the near future because this lens checks all of the boxes for a focal length I will most likely only use occasionally. And after a long day outside of the comfort zone, I think it's more than alright to step back into the comfort zone again, at least for a little while.